Good morning. Well, it's the afternoon now, but at last I finally get to go on my joy ride, but it's gonna be more like a test ride. So, okay, I have my tape here and I'm gonna stop when it starts to really hurt, I guess, and tape it. From what I can tell right now, my crotch definitely hurts, so that area will automatically be taped, but like which parts of my butt hurt the most? I'm not sure, although I'm pretty sure it's like, like you know how, <laughs> imagine my cheeks are my ass, so if you smile, like the most, the point where you feel like there's going to be the most pressure because it's, it has the most surface area on the seat, so when you sit, it's like flexing, right? And then basically, I'd say like, the outer center portion of my cheek is probably where the most force is. So, uh, I won't know for sure until I go riding. So, here I go. It's actually hottish outside, so it might be good to have. Hopefully, the wind is cool, otherwise that would suck. <sighs> okay. <sighs> Need to take off the seat. God, it's so hot out here. Okay, so this is what I ended up with. Um, it kind of sucks. I was really hoping to be a little bit more detailed, although it's just like a seat with tape on it, right? How detailed can you get? But what I did realize, and I was a little surprised and I feel kind of stupid for it because maybe in the past I wasn't um, paying as much attention, but most of my soreness is definitely in my crotch. So I would say that this area right here is where most of the pain comes from. Uh, this tape down here, I'd say my butt kind of like curves over here. So ideally this extra edge could be trimmed down, but I'm a little lazy to like cut it. So it shows the border of where my butt is, but I'd say that the Hot spot is probably in the center. So now that I have my seat off, I can box it up and hopefully the, I think the post office should still be open today. So I'll bring that over, but I am so fucking hot. It is so hot outside, what the hell? So even a day like today, I wouldn't really want to ride because you're just baking. I'm gonna need new gloves as well. And it just, uh, I'm not really thrilled to spend more money on another pair of gloves, but I guess I should have maybe done more research for my first one, but at the same time, I wouldn't have known how these gloves would have felt without buying them and trying them, so just when I first get home and when I'm texting on my phone, I feel a lot of vibration in my fingertips, like my hands are shaking, and every time I press the screen, I feel this weird vibration in my fingertips and it kind of like freaks me out because it makes you feel like what the hell is going on with my body, but it's most likely from the vibration while riding. But I do think that getting a different pair of gloves should at least help a little bit because right now there's just too much bulk with the ones that I have and they also probably have stitching in areas that are not pleasant because if you're gripping, they're going to press against your hand the whole time. And then if you add in vibration, I think it's just a bad combination. So, all right, let's box this up. Um, is there anything I could add for
At last, I am done with my chores. Oh, feels like, ah, it hasn't even been that long. Maybe like almost three hours, but UPS was like the only one open. USPS isn't open today, so my shipping was like $23 just to ship it three hours north. But I guess the size of the box was kind of big and the seat itself isn't super light or anything, so I guess all of that contributed, but I really feel like playing something. I really want to play something. But actually another exciting thing is there's Dota! Dota is starting! Closed qualifiers for the next major starts tonight for China. And LGD is playing. Newbie is playing, but Newbie is a different roster now. It's not the Newbie that I like, so it's gonna be weird. I don't really know if... Uh, I don't know which Chinese team I'm gonna be rooting for anymore. My goodness! Pro Dota 2 is back and I am so freaking excited! The main event is actually in November, but qualifiers are going on and every single team now has to qualify. So they're actually worth watching. There's no direct invites for Valve events. I brought Riley to the corporate center area in Del Mar again. It's so nice and cool in the shade right now, but it's about, I'd say, mid-70s here. Santa Isabel is just somewhere I still really want to go to, but I feel like it feels really awful when you drive an hour somewhere and then it's overly hot where it kind of gets in the way of your enjoyment. So I was going to go to Santa Isabel after stopping here with Riley where we could walk where it's cooler, but uh, mm, I'm not sure if I want to make the drive over only for it to be too hot, so just gonna sit here and relax for a little while before we head back. For some reason it felt so weird to watch Dota again yesterday because even though it has only been a few weeks since TI has ended, it just felt like forever. So the China qualifiers started first and then CIS. So VP started playing at midnight and they will start playing around midnight again today. So it kind of sucks because I don't really think it's worth it for me to feel awful at work just to watch Dota. Sometimes it was really exciting for me to, you know, sleep at 7 and then wake up at 3 a.m. to watch, but if I feel really awful at work, there were so many times where I was so exhausted and it was so miserable, so I don't really want to go through that again. So tonight, China qualifiers start again at 7, so I can watch those just fine, but... I won't be staying up too late. I'm, I might be able to catch a game of VP, maybe. The good thing is that VP's roster didn't change, but newbies did. Two of newbies players left, so I feel a little strange to keep rooting for a newbie. They were definitely my second favorite team, but I, I liked them because of the five players. So now that two are gone, I'm not really sure if I want to root for them anymore. I mean, of course I want to see the three that are still on there succeed, but I wouldn't call them a favorite anymore. Oh, sometimes I just want to sit here and watch you. Such a pretty girl. It's always interesting to me when people go out of their way just to tell me how pretty she is. Sometimes it feels very weird to be on the receiving end of that, you know? <laughs> We're probably gonna go back soon, pups. All right, finally back from Del Mar and kind of felt like talking about something. It was on my mind this morning and it's not something I want to be thinking about. There have been two random instances where I had a dream about someone. Usually I, you know, try really hard not to think about anybody I dislike, but sometimes if you dream about them, it's kind of like indirectly forcing you to think about them because you wake up like why the fuck is this person in my dream 
There have been two instances where I had a dream recently about the guild leader from the last guild that I was in, the one that was generally involved with the whole Dan scenario. And that whole thing was definitely really frustrating because he was actually somebody that I spoke to quite a bit when I started playing again. It was, it definitely felt like a weird situation because last year when I raided with them, I didn't speak to him at all. I never said anything to him ever. And then the past few months, I was talking to him a fair bit um, outside of the game. I'd say that I generally liked the person and it was nice to play with him. He was kind of cool to talk to. I feel like I grew a lot of resentment towards him. It just really disappointed me with the way he handled things because I told him everything about what happened with me and Dan, nearly everything. I showed him all of the screenshots, a lot of them. I told him about what Dan was capable of and he would still just remind me of him randomly paste me something that Dan whispered him that was probably negative about me, complaining about me putting him on ignore, or him casually talking about me when I was at TI saying how he would be doing the mythic dungeons with us. Like he basically invited himself after he knew that I hated him because he's a filthy stalker. That was just something I couldn't understand where he just knew how much I went through how much Dan harassed the shit out of me, and then he would still go out of his way to remind me of this disgusting person. So the more he did that, the more I started realizing that he probably enjoyed this sort of drama. He would still interact with him and stuff, right? And I know that for people online and gaming, they probably don't focus so much on the person itself. And that was kind of something I started realizing later on that really upset me about the whole gaming community was that in a lot of these guilds, there are a lot of members that are extremely shitty human beings, but the guild leader or the officers wouldn't actually do anything about it because they care more about progression than actually being around good people. So for example, in this case, I felt like a good guild leader would have been like, this person is pretty fucked up in the head and he is continuously harassing somebody that hasn't provoked him in a very long time. And I felt like he should have at least understood that me even remotely being around him was extremely uncomfortable and it made me unhappy, but that's the thing, right? He probably didn't really care because he was like, oh, this guy is gonna be a raider for old dear, so I'm gonna just keep him around even though he's a liar. That whole situation really just bugged me. And I think, I think when I ultimately decided to quit, I was kind of sad to have to do that because there were a few people that I did like playing with, but I think for me, I realized that I tend to feel like if someone who you think is a good person hangs out with a bad person, then your good person is not actually as good as you think because if they hang around this person, even if they might not like what that guy is doing, the fact that they remain silent about it kind of condones what they're doing, you know? If you're a doormat to someone being an asshole, then you're just as bad as them nearly. So one of the foreign films that I tend to think about a lot when it comes to the scenario of remaining silent so you don't get attention brought onto yourself is The Square. Because there is this really extensive like eight minute dinner scene where this guy comes into the room. It's a very formal dinner and people are all sitting at large round tables. He's basically acting like a monkey in a way. It's a very weird scene, but it's very powerful because he starts harassing guests. Like it starts off small, but then it keeps gradually getting worse. And during, I'd say 80% of the scene, everybody at the dinner is sitting there in silence and they don't, they don't do anything. 
So while he is harassing somebody and even getting physical with them, nobody is doing anything until he nearly beats the shit out of someone. So I feel like this is a very realistic scene because there are a lot of people in this world who don't really want to say anything, right? Because they want to stay in people's good graces. So that's just how I tend to view this recent scenario of the whole guild garbage because I did like him as a person, but I feel like a lot of my respect for him just went out the window when I saw how he didn't really address any of it in a proper way. I'm not saying I want him to fix my problems for me, absolutely not, but I feel like the way he handled it was very disrespectful to me because he was proactively reminding me of Dan when he knew everything already. So basically, he was voluntarily bringing on negative feelings towards me and it started making me very bitter. Initially, when I quit the guild and everything, I wasn't gonna cut him off. But then after a while, I was like, you know what? He has a link to Dan. And even though I liked talking to him and I liked playing with him, the fact that he is still associated with Dan, who does all this fucked up stuff, means that he is not someone worth keeping around either. There are times where I think a lot about the people that I have dumped out of my life, but at times I like that I am willing to do it because in most cases, or I'd say in all of my cases, I have never regretted getting rid of someone because it doesn't matter if I get along well with them. If something else makes my interaction with them more negative than positive, then it's never going to be a good influence in your life. It sucks to be reminded of somebody through a dream because you don't really have control over that. And normally you would never want to think about people like that. I've been using the word disappointment a lot lately, but specifically for that scenario, it does really disappoint me because there are so many times where you wished that someone could demonstrate that they were better than you would hope, but a lot of people tend to let you down. Plus, when it comes to online, I feel like there won't really be many scenarios where you make a really meaningful connection. All of my longest online friendships have started since like 10 years ago so these recent years not so much and it's not that i am actively avoiding making good friends online i'm actually one of the most open people i feel like i will tell anybody anything about me i don't care if i just met you today i can tell you everything about me but a lot of people online are really flaky or they tend to use you as someone that they only want to interact with on their own terms. So there's actually somebody that I met at the beginning of Legion that I felt like I was pretty good friends with or I got along with him really well. But then lately, I just don't really think I want him at all in my life anymore because anytime he has sent me a message recently, I just have zero desire to reply. And I feel like once it gets to that stage, you might as well just get rid of them because it's not gonna change. Your view of them won't change. And the reason I tend to view him that way now is because there were so many times where I would whisper him and he would not reply at all. So after a few times of that and him just like, kind of basically ignoring you unless he wants something from you, which happened many times, by the way. Like he only whispered me if he wanted to skip a heroic dungeon queue as DPS because I could heal on my priest. So people like that are, you don't want in your life. They use you. And if you, if they don't feel like talking to you the rest of the time and you send them a message or you ask them about stuff, discard them they're kind of useless. All right, I'm done ranting. I'm gonna move on to thinking about better things, more meaningful things that deserve to have thought. 
put into it. It's only 2.30 on Sunday, so I'm probably going to finish Cool Hand Luke. I've watched about half of it and I guess work out, edit my video, and then I have some amazing Dota to watch again tonight. So hope everyone's having a good weekend.